famous. Say, where's the kingfish been? He been getting down to the lodge hall in the mornings no more. Oh, the kingfish at home. Uh, he and Sapphire listen to a program on the radio there, Happy Harrington. Oh, yeah, radio's happy as couples. Oh, they wouldn't miss that program for the world. They really love it. <laughs> Well, Harriet, I see our time is up once again. I must say goodbye to all our charming friends. That's right, darling. And until tomorrow, this is Harriet. And Harry saying goodbye, goodbye and, and stay, stay happy. <sighs> George, I can't get over how much more pleasant things it's been since we've been listening to the happy Harry. Yeah, it's made a difference around here. Breakfast more pleasant. Yeah, honey, they done something for us. I thought the Harringtons was particularly wonderful this morning. Well, I thought they wasn't as good as usual. I thought they was a whole lot better yesterday morning. Oh, I thought they was so much better today. But then we all entitled to our own opinion. Because I thought Harry was just wonderful. <laughs> just wonderful. Well, as a matter of fact, now that you mentioned it, the uh, boy sort of got on my nerves this morning. He got on your nerves? And just how did he do that? Well, I don't know. Uh, sometimes the boy seemed too happy. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, sometimes he's so happy that I got a sneaking suspicion that they ain't mad at all. <laughs> now, what is it now? You are one person who could certainly learn something from Harry Harrington. He's pleasant and jovial all the time. Sure happy. Setting up there in that penthouse, wearing a $200 suit of coat, sipping coffee out of a golden cup, and wondering what nightclub he's going to later on. George Stevens! What is it now? The Happy Harringtons has showed me something. Married people can be happy. And George Stevens, from now on, me and you is going to be a happy married couple. Do you understand? All right with me. I have always been the one to try to bring a little happiness into the home. What you talking about? If there's any happiness here, I'm the one responsible for it. You brought happiness? Huh. You've been a sourpuss all your life. Don't you call me a sourpuss. I'm always trying to be gay and happy, you old crab. You gay and happy? Why, well, I know fellas in the death house that's gayer than you is. <laughs> I haven't heard enough of this. George Stevens, me and you, me and you is going to have happiness around here if it's the last thing I ever do in my life. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And you can do the dishes. <laughs> yeah, me. that's what I like about the large hall. Here I have peace and quiet. Here I have comfort. Here I have friends. And here I have relaxation. And here I have the ace of diamonds. That's <laughs> it. No, no, maybe I mean it. You don't know what it's like, boy, being married and trying to find happiness. The two just don't go together. Yeah, I guess you and Sapphire was fighting even before Dempsey and Furpole. <laughs> you ain't had much happiness, did you? No, and I'm afraid I ain't. Now, you something I wouldn't want brooded around. But on our honeymoon, Sapphire and I had our first argument. She laid me out cold with a vase. Knocked you out on your honeymoon? I was unconscious three days. Andy, I hate to say this, but them were the three happiest days of my married life. Well, it's a funny thing. You listen to the radio to people that's happy and you so unhappy. You two is growed up, but she's acting like a couple of children in your infantry. Well, Andy, maybe I've been too touchy. Maybe I've been super sensitive. But after all, just because she liked the Happy Harringtons, ain't no reason why I should go flying off the handle. Andy, I'm gonna give it another chance. I think I found a solution to stop the fight. From here on in, I'm gonna agree with everything she says. Everything. That's the thing to do. No matter what she says, you stay in complete accordion with her. <laughs> well, Harriet, that just about wraps up the program for today. Yes, Harry. And I hope all our dear, dear listeners will be with us again tomorrow because we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful show. And until tomorrow, this is Harry. And Harriet saying goodbye. goodbye.
and, and stay, stay happy. They had a nice program. They certainly did. Uh, they did that. I uh, agree with you 100%. They did that. <laughs> that was a cute little number they'd done together, wasn't it? Cutest little number I ever heard. I agree with you completely. I do that. I do that. <laughs> And it was a cute story, wasn't it, the way they found that little French poodle in Paris? <laughs> the cutest story I ever heard. I agree with you 100%. I do that. I do that. What's the matter with you, George? Ain't you got no mind of your own? Well, I'm only agreeing with you. You could at least express an opinion of your own. Must I tell the whole conversation? Well, now, honey. You sat there and heard the whole program. Ain't you got no opinion, no ideas on it? Well, now that you spoke of it, I think Harriet was a little... That's ridiculous. Honey, I'm only agreeing with you. I don't want you to agree with me. What am I, a child that I have to be humored? Do you think I'm stupid? All right, so you're stupid. The program was the worst mess I ever heard. So, you've never liked the Harrington's, have you? All these mornings, you've been sitting here listening to it and pretending to like it. Now, wait a minute, Sapphire. George Stevens, you've been living a lie. That settles it. You're the most impossible woman that ever lived. Don't you shout at me. I'll shout at who I please. This is my house and a man's home is his castle. Once again, our time is just about up. Yes, and I hope once again we have made your breakfast a little bit happier. And I hope this breakfast has been the same delightful, happy occasion for you as it has been for us. Yes, dear listeners. Every morning we try to make breakfast just a little more enjoyable for all you happy couples everywhere. And until tomorrow, then, this is Harry. And Harriet saying goodbye. goodbye. And, and stay happy. happy. Join us tomorrow when we will once again present the Happy Harringtons. This program was brought to you through the courtesy of... <laughs> oh, Sarah. <laughs> yes, Amos. He actually broke down and cried. No, that's a shame. The saddest thing I ever see, the poor kingfish blubbering all over his poached eggs. <laughs> you know, since they've been listening to the Happy Harringtons, they's worse than ever. Well, I wouldn't blame the program. You know, it's just too bad that Sapphire and the kingfish couldn't be more like the Harringtons. Yeah, well, uh... Yeah, I think it just might work, Sapphire. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe the reason we fight is because I ain't like Harriet. Maybe I could be more happy. Amos, I'm going to try. I really am. Oh, that's nice. Amos, I think you got something there. That's right, Kingfish. If you tried being like Harry, maybe Sapphire is going to turn out to be just like Harriet. Amos, you are a genius. Well, Sapphire started out to pattern herself after Harriet. Yes, Harry and I spent one of our most enjoyable evenings last night. Didn't we, Harry? Oh, indeed, we did. We had an early dinner at the Stork, and then Harriet and I joined a party of our friends for the horse show at the garden. Yes, and coming home, I was positively famished. And we stopped in at the quaintest little place right off Madison. It was simply exquisite. And she really got some good pointers. And the kingfish didn't waste no time to pattern himself after Harry. 
Harry and I were at home last night to a small group of our most intimate friends. Yes, one of the most stimulating evenings we've spent in a long time. Charming friends, delightful conversation. Oh, the conversation fairly sparkled with tidbits about the theater. And we chit-chatted for hours with Colonel Thorndike. He's the one who was on that uh, diplomatic thing, you know. And you had the apartment just perfect. One mass of flowers. Oh. Oh, just a perfect evening, my dear. And the kingfish picked up some pointers, too. Mm, let's see here. Uh, flowers, candy, nightclub, charming friends, compliments, tea, Lawn party, croquet, horseback riding, charming friends. Well, most of that sounds all right. But you got croquettes here. Do eating them make you happy? Oh, and that's croquet. It's a game played with polo ponies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but the thing, uh, with the happy hankins is their social life. They're always talking about uh, being at the opera with Noel and chit-chatting at the theater with Salula. In other words, that's one of the reasons they are happy, because they're always chit-chatting with charming friends. So me and Sapphire are going to start chit-chatting with charming people. <laughs> well, there's only one catch there, Kingfish. You don't know this fellow, Tallulah. <laughs> Where are you going to get these charming and cultured people you is going to chit-chat with? Well, Andy, that's why I'm going to have to cut a few corners. I want you to get a hold of one of them gals of yours, and you and her is going to be my charming circle of friends for the evening. Uh, me get a hold of a gal? That's right, but be sure to write tight. Cultured, charming, and refined. I got just the right gal, Rosemary D. Winters. Good, good. Hello? Uh, may I speak to Miss DeWinters, please? Oh, I see. Uh, well, when she gets off to Mango, will you have her call Mr. Brown? <laughs> People, nice, charming people. We're gonna have a lot of nice chit chat, and everything's gonna be jolly and gay. <laughs> We're gonna have a charming evening, a charming evening. Well, I hope they're nice. After all, that must be our charming friends now. <laughs> well, come in, my charming friends. It's charming to see you. Yeah, charmed to see you too, Kingfish, and uh, charmed to see you too, Sapphire. Uh, see that Sapphire? The whole mess of us is all charmed up. Good evening, Andy. Uh, Sapphire, may I introduce you up with Miss Rosemary De Winters? Uh, she's going to be my fiancé for the evening. <laughs> How do you do, Miss De Winters? Hello, Mrs. Stevens. Well, I'm uh, glad you charming folks got here. Can I take your wrap, Rosemary? Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Rosemary, you better put your wrap back on. You done lost the top of your dress. Oh, Andy, silly. This is the new strapless model that they're wearing now. Yeah, it's mighty pretty, too. Uh, Sapphire can't wear them things on account of a tooth and collarbone. <laughs> she was last year when she listened to Wash Talk. Don't. Uh, I was trying to make conversation, honey. Just trying to make conversation. Well, we are due at the nightclub at 8. Uh, won't you all have a little snack? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Stevens, I don't like to hurry you, but it is rather late, isn't it? What do you mean? Well, we're going to leave for the club in about five or ten minutes. Don't you think you'd better start getting dressed? Well, I... Dressed? Oh, uh, yes. You don't want to go to a nightclub in that old house coat. <laughs> I am dressed. And if you want to know...
know my opinion. I think I look about four times as attractive as you do. Well, I can't think of no better time than now to start chit-chatting. <laughs> interesting things are uh, like the art, the opera, the museum, and all that kind of stuff. Well, is everybody comfortable? Good. Now for some interesting chit-chat. <laughs> mm, yeah. Are you comfortable there, Rosemary? Yes, I am. Mm, yeah. Are you comfortable in that chair, Sapphire? I have been for 20 years. <laughs> <clears throat> the chit-chat seem to be dragging a little bit, don't it? Uh, ain't nobody been to the opera or the theater lately? Yeah, I was at the theater last night. Oh, the theater, huh? Well, tell us about it. Well, uh, the first thing, uh, Bubbles Levine come out on the runway and then she... <laughs> Well, so much for the theater. I guess we better be getting on. Yeah, let's get going. I've had enough of this chit-chat. I think we've been sitting here long enough. I'll get my coat. <laughs> well, so much for the charming evening. Between Sapphire and the Kingfish this morning. Well, that picture's back on my wall again. He moved in for good. Kingfish and Sapphire ain't even speaking. Well, this is the worst mess I ever heard of. I guess by now Sapphire and the Kingfish has had enough of the happy herrings. Yeah, the poor Kingfish is desperate. Mm. He went over to Al Gonquin J. Calhoun to see if there ain't some way out of this mess. Well, see you later, Amos. Okay, Andy. Calhoun, I desperate. That's the reason I come to you. I got to get some good sound advice from some intelligent person. Well, now, I'd like to help you, Kingfish, but I don't know nobody like that. No, Calhoun, <laughs> you. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, Kingfish, I don't see no reason why you and your wife have to fight all the time. I don't see no reason why you and Sapphire can't be happy. You don't, huh? No, sir. Let's examine the situation here. After all, you has got a wife who is a beau... Uh, <laughs> you was an intelligent... Uh, she got a personality that... Uh, your character is of such that the... Both of you together is... Uh... Kingfish, you were a lot worse off than I thought you were. <laughs> I desperate. We tried everything. We even tried being like the Happy Harringtons. We done everything they did, and we are fighting worse than ever. Well, now maybe you done it, but maybe you ain't done done it like they done did it. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe them Harringtons done got some secret of happiness that I can't get a grip on. I wonder what they got there. Oh, well, if it's the answer you was after, the thing is simple. Go right to the Harringtons and ask them. Calhoun, I'm going to do it. I'm going to see if I can't get Sapphire to go down to the radio station with me tomorrow morning and talk with the Happy Harringtons. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Look, Sapphire, don't hang up. Please do this for me. Please go with me to see the Happy Harringtons. Well, all right, George. I'll meet you at the broadcasting studio in the morning. I just hope it works out. Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you. I'll meet you there at 8 o'clock in the morning.
Sergeant, you sure they'll see us? Oh, yeah, I done called them. They said they would see us in the dressing room before they went on the radio this morning. Well, here goes. George, I hope they can help us. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. They say they're always happy to talk to members of their great radio family. That's what they said. I hope we find out their secret of happiness. Uh, Mr. Harrington? Yes? And what can I do for you two lovely, lovely people? Well, uh, we as Mr. and Mrs. Stevens. We called about uh, talking to you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, please do come in. <laughs> There we are. And I would like you to meet my charming wife. Oh, Harriet, dear, these two lovely people are the Stevenses. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Stevens. So nice of you to call. How do you do? Yeah, how do you do there? <laughs> oh, won't you sit down? So, oh, Mrs. Stevens, you sit right here, please. Darling, you sit right there. And, uh, Mrs. Stevens, if you please. Thank you. Now then, and, uh, now, what can we do for you? Come now, Harriet and I are always ready to help members of our great radio family. Aren't we, Harriet, darling? That's right, Harry, sweetheart. Well, the thing in a nutshell is, uh, well, me and my wife would like to know where you all get all this happiness from. <laughs> <laughs> yes, could you just tell us something that would make us as happy as you? Well, maybe we could. You see, we feel that cooperation and understanding are the keynotes to a happy marriage. You see, Mrs. Stevens, years ago, when I got the idea for this radio program and sold it to the network... Oh, Harry, dear. Yes, Harriet, darling? You said you got the idea. <laughs> if you remember, darling, the idea for the program was mine. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right, sweetheart. Well, what I meant to say was when I took the program and sold it to the network... Oh, Angel. Yes, dear. Both of us took the program to the network. But, honey, if you'll remember, I was the one who did the talking. <laughs> but, Lamb, I was the one who told you what to say. Oh, dear, I don't like to disagree with you, but the truth of the matter is, it was my idea from the start. Your idea? You never had an idea in your life. Ha, ha, ha. Don't you laugh at me, Miss Big Mouth. Don't you call me Miss Big Mouth, you smirking old. How dare you call me smirking old? Head. Oh, I've a good mind to... You lay a finger on me and I'll flatten that pinhead of yours. Excuse me, please. But would you all mind stopping to fight long enough to tell us where you get all this happiness from? You keep out of this. Now, who's calling to pinhead? Oh, I've a good mind to wring that scrawny neck of yours. I'll fix you. Let me get my hand on you. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is station KTIX, welcoming you once again to the happiest half hour in radio. However, due to an unforeseen accident, we regret that the happy Harringtons will not be with us this morning. But the show must go on, and fortunately, we are about to rush in a last minute substitution. And here they are, the happy Stevenses. Good morning, darling. Good morning, sweetheart. Happy, happy, happy. And now for some interesting chit-chat. Oh. 